Okay, so um, I'm a lot calmer now. Uh, my psychotic therapeutic rant in part one helped, which is what I expected it to do. It allowed me to throw out all the anger that I had because I had just watched the movie and I was just, you know, just so absolutely livid. But uh, oddly enough, part of me wants to, part of me thinks I should redo part one because I'm afraid that anybody who sees part one is going to think that all I'm going to be doing in every other part is just going to be psychotic rant and but at the same time I want to keep it up because I want people to realize that I was goddamn pissed and I'm not going to be able to uh, emote that now because that initial anger is gone so now it's just me wanting to tear this movie a new asshole and just show how stupid this movie is and how stupid the fans of this movie are for again same thing with infinity war and endgame how you have to be a brain dead idiot and be in a mental coma to be able to like this movie and get through this movie because again i, I every 20 minutes i had to take a break from the stupid and bullshit of this movie like how you guys were able to sit through this for two and a half hours without stopping and like recuperating your mental capacity was beyond me because I sure as hell wouldn't have done it uh, another aspect about this episode this part is that it's more revealing how pathetic and useless he is how R Ryan Johnson is as opposed to me being mad at the movie uh, to start off we have when Snoke uses his when we're at the bridge of uh, huts his ship and Snoke shows up and Snoke uses his power on Hux and all he does is like flatten him out and spin him around and I'm going this is the best you could think up Brian I mean there's this little known scene in A New Hope uh, it's with Darth Vader uh, I can't remember the name of the person he chokes but all he does is he just you know just choking him just and it's one of the most badass scenes in the entire trilogy right Darth Vader force choking I forget who it was right you having Snoke okay have Hawks go, go down is pathetic there's nothing the audience will see that and have any value or reason to consider Snoke a threat. It's such a lame attempt at showing force powers. It's pathetic. Like, I couldn't get mad at it because it's so goddamn hilarious how useless you are in not understanding what you can do with the force. And just, I mean, again, you got how many millions of dollars, hundreds of millions of dollars for special effects, and the best you could come up with was him being slammed onto the ground and spinning. You, you could have had him floating up in the air, you know, uh, uh, like you did with uh, Ray later on in the movie. Something to show that was supposed to be intimidated and fearful of snow. No, because you have no goddamn clue what you're doing. Then, we have Finn waking up, attached to the medical equipment, wandering around, right? And it's like, well, f first you get that stupid-ass pratfall, and how he's totally, uh, d d disattach disattaches himself from all the medical equipment. Well, isn't that medical equipment, I don't know, keeping him alive, healing him? Causing him to recuperate? Nah, apparently, apparently it doesn't work that way, right? And it's like, are doctors or nurses around to like check on him to see what's going on, to see if he's okay? Nah, screw it. Is that liquid spurting out of him, you know, not vital to his health or recovery or anything? Nah, he's, apparently now he's just like a human little, he's a walking human water fountain. 
Where's the? Where's all this liquid coming from, moron? Hey, morons who have wa who, wa who watched that scene. Where's all this water coming? The guy's been wandering around for who knows how long. What? Where's all this liquid coming from? We got an endless supply. He's literally a walking water fountain. Does anybody stop him or go, hey, dude, you all right? Nah, they let him wander around. It, just, like, does anybody stop him and say, hey, you just obviously came from the medical bay. Maybe we should send you back. Nah. Are there any doctors who are, 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 are any of the doctors who are the nurses in medical bay opening up the door to this woman going, where the hell is Finn? Nah, apparently they don't care either. I know I'm reading a lot into this, but this was this is what that scene is, is establishing. It's not meant to establish, but that's what it establishes. Okay? It establishes that Ryan Johnson doesn't give a shit what the scene does. What it what what, what the scene ends up needing to have happen for it to happen. It's supposed to be some comedic slapstick scene with Finn that see because you morons watching this movie who didn't have a problem with this scene have no goddamn clue how to think beyond what's on the visual aspects on this movie screen you didn't know you didn't care you have no goddamn problem unfortunately I okay notice these things I have an intelligent quota over double digits Okay, so I'm able to notice these things. Okay, see that, that that's what I'm here for. I'm here for you. I'm here to point out the stupid. You guys are too stupid to know is stupid. Okay, it's, it's just the kind of guy I am. And then we have Paul. He sees him and goes, "Hey, we need to get you dressed." No, you don't. You need him to get. You need to get him back into medical. You don't know what his condition is. You, you, you don't know what happened. You, you see him walking around with tubes, still spurting out liquid, still in whatever medical gear he's in. What, do you think the doctors released him that way? Say, oh yeah, Finn, you're fine. You can just get up, get off the table, and just walk around with, you know, the, 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 the nutrient spray just flowing around. You're fine. Like, because Ryan Johnson doesn't know what the hell he's doing. He doesn't. He just saw this one scene and went, yeah, it's, it's funny, that's all that matters. Then we get to Luke Skywalker. Now, much like the rest of you, much like most of you, it's obviously not the rest of you because some of you people didn't have a problem with this. Like most of you, I had a problem with what they were doing with Luke and how Luke just tossed the lightsaber and how they made him into like this miserable uh, old codger. And when it first happened, I understood. I, I was pissed. But then, as the movie went on, I understood the point. I understood why Ryan Johnson was doing all this bullshit to Luke Skywalker because he wanted you to not view Luke Skywalker as the Jedi hero he was in the first three movies. Ryan Johnson wanted to downplay Luke Skywalker as much as possible. He wanted the audience to go, this isn't Luke Skywalker Jedi hero. This is Luke Skywalker, an old crotchety, miserable, unhappy codger who, who, who doesn't want to be with anybody. He doesn't want to help. That's who Luke Skywalker has to be. He doesn't give a shit about his old um, uh, lightsaber. He doesn't care about the history of it. Okay, you got you 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 all fa you fans of the old, of the original trilogy. You're fans. He's not. You th th this was Ryan's way of having the audience not like Luke Skywalker. Okay, uh, when 
Like the same thing with um, because it's it was Ryan's plan for Luke to be disliked and for the audience to not connect with Luke, make him the past. Okay, not not because when we watched the movie, we had all our focus and all our attention and all we cared about was Luke. We didn't give a rat's ass about Ray. Okay, we all wanted and were waiting for Luke. Ryan Johnson needed us to not. He wanted, he wanted Luke Skywalker to be so uh, unappealing that we didn't want to see Luke. He wanted us to be so pissed off at what he did to Luke that we wouldn't give a shit about Luke anymore. Okay? It's the same thing with... Um, the whole milking scene. Okay? Because it, it was meant to do nothing but humiliate and demean the Luke Skywalker character we all love. Okay? He did it on purpose so that we would hate, we wouldn't want to see any more of Ryan Johnson pissing all over Luke Skywalker. So he was doing all of this shit to make it so that we wouldn't like Luke Skywalker. We wouldn't want to see Luke Skywalker anymore because all he is is this cr crotchety old man who, 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 who drinks that milk from whatever that creature was. It's, he's disgusting. He's a loser. Don't focus on... He wants us to stop focusing on Luke and have it so that we are forced by default to focus on Rey if we want a Jedi. He wants, he wanted us as fans of Luke Skywalker to no longer look at Luke Skywalker as a Jedi. We had to look at Rey as the Jedi. That was the whole purpose. And the thing was, and the thing is, the reason I'm not as, and the reason I'm no longer as pissed is because it backfired full bore on Ryan Johnson because the us fans didn't make our hate against uh, Luke Skywalker we didn't go oh we don't like Luke Skywalker anymore we ended up going we hate you you goddamn hack piece of shit Ryan Johnson for doing what you did to Luke Skywalker you can't make us not like Skywalker Luke Skywalker. You will never make us think of Luke Skywalker as nothing more than the Jedi Master that he is. Okay? He's not just a teacher, okay, that wants to denigrate and denigrate the, the Jedi Order and, and cause it to end. It, it, it was all meant for us who are fans of Luke Skywalker to not want to be fans of this Luke Skywalker. You can be fans of the old one, but you can't be fans of the new Luke Skywalker. You need to be fans of Rey. And guess what? It didn't work. That's why I'm so that's why I'm not as pissed about what he did to Luke Skywalker as I was initially. Because it didn't work, you moron. Okay? And it was never gonna work. And the fact that it backfired it, it is what is what alleviates all the anger of what he did to Luke Skywalker. Then we have the Porgs. Now, here's an aspect of the Porgs that I, I find so glorious. Porg merchandise sold better than Ray merchandise. Okay? This is how pathetic and uninteresting and how nobody gives a rat's ass about your lead main character. Your hero, Ray, of this entire show couldn't even sell a tenth of the merchandise of, like a, of, a, of an animal character that has what? A total of 20 seconds of screen time. A, a bird creature 
people were people cared more and bought more merchandise of a 20 second uh how do you say a third a third rate character more than your main hero more than your main character and I, and I love that I love that fact that that's why I love the porgs because people with only 20 seconds of screen time more people the people who were supposed to love Ray ended up loving the porgs because they had more personality and more interest than they do in your goddamn main character. That's how useless your main character is. That's how useless this movie is in trying to make her anybody interesting or anybody to care about. Porgs are people. Are, people care more about the porgs than your main character. You're losers. You're idiots. You have no goddamn clue what you're doing. Uh, what else? Oh, and then, then there's the then there's um. Well, where when uh, Chewbacca comes in and Luke goes, "Where's Han?" Here's the thing about that line. It served two purposes. One, Ryan Johnson goes, "Well, there's no sense in rehashing the." Backstory because the audience already knows so there's no purpose but the more significant reason that They cut away and you never found out about You never saw Luke's reaction is because that would make you sympathize with him Okay, if you if they had if Ryan Johnson had showed Luke missing Han being uh, sad, being in, showing an emotion other than being a, uh, a crotchety old man, you would end up connecting with him. He couldn't have that. He can't have you connecting with Luke. So that's why you never see Luke's reaction to one of his best friend's death. Because then it would take away the whole purpose of what Ryan Johnson is trying to do to Luke. Uh, what else? Then we have the first order following them through light speed. How? Why? It's easy. Because the story needed them to. I don't remember how they were able to get the tracking device on one of the cruisers. I don't care. Okay? Do they don't, do they, because they don't explain it. As far as I know, they don't explain it. How are they able to travel through light speed? They literally pull out the old Star Trek pseudoscience mumble, mumble jumbo. The, here's the reason they were able to travel, be able to track them through light speed. Because Ryan Johnson had no goddamn clue and doesn't have the skill and the ability to think of anything story-wise to be able to make it happen. So he pulled it out of his ass. Okay? The reason... The first order was able to track uh, the cruiser through light speed was because the story needed them to and Ryan Johnson couldn't give a damn about trying to think up of something or have the skill or ability to even come up with anything. Uh, what else? Then you see the Star Destroyers firing at the, the cruiser, right? And you see them hitting a force field. So there's a force field around the cruiser. Except when Kylo Ren in, I, I guess it was a specialized TIE fighter. I don't know what the name of it was. Except when Kylo Ren shows up, there's no shield. Wait, the shield disappeared. Where did it go? Because he was able to fire at the cruiser and hit. You see him stra stra uh, strafing the uh, the cruiser. Oh, what happened to the shields? Uh, are you telling me that 
Look, let me guess. Let me guess. The laser rifle from the TIE fighters are too small for the shields to stop. It can, the, the shields can stop the, the laser cannons from a, from a destroyer, but somehow can't stop the laser fire from a TIE fighter because what? It's too small and it was able to sneak through the ions of the, of the, of the shield. Give me a break. Then he's flying into the hangar. Whoa, wait a minute. So now, not only can he fire through the shields that we've already established are surrounding the, the cruiser. Not only can he fire through them, apparently he cannot fly through it. Let me guess, let me guess. The ship is too small for the, for the shields to, to, to stop. You use that stupid excuse on the destroyer, you might as well use it on the cruiser. So, there's no goddamn way Kylo Ren should have been able to shoot the cruiser. There's no goddamn way Kylo Ren should have been able to fly through that tunnel to the hangar. Speaking of the tunnel, speaking of the tunnel, so, he's flying through this tunnel at full bore speed, okay? Fires and blows up the hangar. Okay? Hey morons, here's a question. Pop quiz. How the hell did Kylo Ren get back out again? You saw the tunnel. What did he do? He's going full bore. Okay? He should have gone in and he should have been he should have flown right into the explosion he just caused. No no no. How did he turn around? There's no way he could have turned around. There was no room. He's going full bore. The thing's exploding. There's no way he could have gotten out because you can't turn in the tunnel. You go in or you go out. You don't turn in the tunnel, morons. But you know what? Don't think about that. Let's go to the next scene and then the following scene we'll see Kylo Ren out in space. Then, so, here's their plan. Go full speed to get out of range of the Star Destroyers, and the TIE Fighters will, fight, will fall back. Why? Why would the TIE Fighters fall back? The movie already established the TIE Fighters can hit the cruiser you've already established you destroyed their hangar which means no x-wings will be coming out to fight the tie fighters so if there's nobody fighting the tie fighters the cruisers can't fire back at the tie fighters and the tie fighters can indiscriminately fire upon the the cruiser without any difficulty why would the TIE fighters fall back oh wait because the movie needs them to like oh Jesus H Christ it's like I wrote down they need to fall back they need to fall back otherwise they'll destroy the cruiser so now that the TIE fighters are done and they're being and they're going back, oh look, the shields are back because they, they go uh, a full uh, uh, oh what's the word um put put like uh, shift all like shift the power to the rear shields right. So then we have Kylo Ren doing that. I'm about to kill my mommy scene, and then the, now remember. You see the shields back up, stopping the laser cannon fire from the Star Destroyers. Then the two fighter, then the Kylo Ren goes, and he's about to shoot Mommy, doesn't do it. Two TIE fighters come in, and then shoot uh, the bridge. Well, you've not, hey, hey Ryan, you goddamn moron. You just reestablished the TIE Fighters can hit the cruiser 
indiscriminately. They can hit the, the cruiser. They can just stand. They can, they can fly around for the next 20 seconds. Do nothing but fire upon the cruiser. And the cruiser's gone. Like, how do you people see this and not in any way grasp that the TIE fighters can hit the ship? They can hit the cruiser. Which means they can keep firing at the cruiser. Hey, maybe maybe the cruiser, because again, remember, every Empire ship, okay, seems to have a weak spot. We end up finding out that the Empire buys their shit from the weapons dealer in the casino. But then again, so does the resistance. So maybe the cruiser, if they're being built by the same idiots that build the equipment for the Empire, maybe the cruiser also has a weak spot. Just hit that one little spot on the cruiser and the whole cruiser blows up. I mean, why not? If, if it's the same people who designed the Empire sh the ships for the First Order, maybe they did it because because you know what? P planned uh, obsolescence. That's why all these ships have a weak spot. Okay? Because what good is selling them a multi-billion dollar or multi-billion credit Star Destroyer if they never need it again? So they're all built with a built-in weak spot. So that way, oh, oops, do you need another Star Destroyer? Well, guess what? We got a sale this week. In all, in all honesty, it makes more sense this way. That you got people designing and building the Star Destroyers with a built-in weakness so that when a lone ship, when a lone X-Wing blows it up, oh look, the Empire now has to buy another multi-billion dollar Star Destroyer. No, no wonder these guys are rich. The Empire is too stupid to ask them to build something with, without a weak spot. So anyway, the two fighters fire on the bridge, and oh look, the shields are back down again. Then Hawks goes, fall back. We can't cover you at this distance. Hey Ryan, you just showed that they don't need cover. They can hit the cruiser indiscriminately. Huck should have said, Kylo, come back. Because, oh, okay, hold on. So, I, I, I wrote down that. Huck should have said, Kylo, we need you to fall back. There's still two hours left in the movie. Not, not that we, we, we can't cover you. It's like, we're only half an hour into the movie. We can't have you end it now. That would make it the length of a Mandalorian episode. Oh, other than episode one, because what, episode one of The Mandalorian was like, what, 40 minutes, but everything else was like half an hour or less? Gee, what, what, anyway. I already, I'm already dealing with The Mandalorian on my own. Then they go, our cannons are ineffective against their shields. Well, doesn't seem to be, doesn't seem to be stopping the TIE Fighters. I, I love how the shields are able to stop the laser cannons of a Star Destroyer but are somehow ineffective against TIE Fighters. Then we have Leia. We have Leia flying back. And again, it's hard to get pissed at this because it's so blatantly goddamn stupid. And the only real problem I have, and, and as stupid as that scene is, my only real problem with that scene was that it's because Ryan Johnson pulled that pow level of power out of his ass. Okay? Because you never have Leia ever again use the Force on any level. Okay? And never before did Leia ever use the Force at any level in, in comparison to being able to 
survive space, hold up, uh, stave off deck, and fly back in. They never have Leia show that level of power again. They sit, because Ryan Johnson, much like J.J. Abrams, does not understand how the Force works. Okay? They don't know how the Force works. J.J. Abrams doesn't know how uh, the Force works, how lightsabers work, how droids work, all that stuff. Ryan Johnson, just not only does Ryan Johnson not know how the Force works, he doesn't understand how Star Wars works. He literally thinks he can pull whatever bullshit out of his ass and it works. It's okay. There shouldn't be a problem with it. Now, for the majority of people who love this show and have no goddamn clue about Star Wars, when they see this bullshit, they don't have a problem with it because they don't know that there's a problem. Okay? And that is who this movie's for. This movie's not for Star Wars fans. Okay? It's not for Star Wars fans because you can't be a Star Wars fan and not call bullshit every two minutes in this film. This movie is for people who are fans of the Disney Star Wars, but not Star Wars. See, there's Star Wars, okay? The original trilogy. There's, I believe, I believe George Lucas made three other films that I, I, I don't know about. I, 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 it's only a rumor. As far as I know, it's a rumor that he made these prequels. I never seen them. I don't know they exist. So most of the people who are fans of, you know, Disney Star Wars, only know Disney Star Wars. Those are the only Star Wars movies they've seen. So they're used to Ryan Johnson and J.J. Abrams and any of the other Star Wars movies just pulling bullshit out of their ass that they have no idea how the Force works. So again, Leia coming, Leia being able to survive space makes sense in the context of the movie because nobody knows how the Force works and the audience who love this movie don't know how the Force works and don't care how the Force works. So Ryan Johnson and J.J. Abrams can do whatever the hell they want and none of the fans of this movie will care. <clears throat> then we have uh, Chewbacca with uh, the Porgs. And the Porgs giving the sad eyes as Chewbacca was about to eat one of them. Now, here's the thing. So, you see the scene of the Porg roasting on a spit over the fire. The other porgs don't show up. Again, this is not what the scene is meant, but this is what and this is what is stop this is what has to establish for this scene to happen. And that's why I'm making fun of it because it's glorious. So the other porgs don't show up until Chewbacca is about to eat the porg. So what? The other porgs didn't show up while he was, you know, killing, skinning it, and roasting it over the fire. Like, the, the other porgs didn't have a problem with Chewbacca roasting their dead body over the fire pit. That was apparently fine. But, oh my God, once he was about to eat it, that's when the porgs showed up and gave the sad eyes. Sorry, that's what happened. Okay? What? He didn't... What? He was cooking... He was cooking the porg over the spit and he didn't notice the porgs? But he somehow noticed the porgs once he started eating it? Bullshit. Okay? The... If the porg... Oh, let me guess. Let me guess. The porgs were there but because they were off screen since the audience didn't see it Chewbacca didn't see it. Then we have that scene with uh, Purple Hair and Paul. Now, there's a lot of bullshit involved in that. But there was one aspect that 
I actually yelled back at the movie at the, at, at the movie for this. It's when she says to Paul, "Wasn't Leia's last official act to demote you?" And I was thinking, "No, bitch. Leia's last official act was for me to be able to go jump in an X in an X wing and blow something up. That was Leia's last official act. Okay, nice try, bitch. Anyway, um, yes." I know that I've glossed over a lot of the more serious things and more of the big screw-ups and issues that we all have with this movie, but it's already been covered a thousand times by a thousand different YouTubers, you know, literally like what, almost a thousand days ago, right? What, three years? Yeah, about, no, two years, right? It, it's already been covered. We already know what the problems are. I, at the same time, I also kind of wanted to balance out the absolute rant from my first video that I'm not going to do that all the time because this movie is no longer, this movie is not worth it. This movie is not worth, because I have to watch it again, okay? And I, I could only handle... I got, I have to, I stopped writing notes because I pretty much got 20 minutes, you know, I watched another 20 minutes and that was it. I couldn't handle it anymore. I, it, it's, it's a, it's a drain and a, and, and a chore and to just watch this movie again, just to point out all the things that I hate about it. So at the very least, the only way I can keep going and at least try and cover something that hasn't already been covered a thousand times before is all the stuff that I can mock at, all the stuff that I can make fun of on how goddamn stupid and useless and pathetic Ryan Johnson is and, and how, to be honest, at the same time how pathetic and brain dead all the people who love this movie are for not noticing it, okay? I, I'm not going to stress myself out over this movie, okay? I'm not going to give myself an ulcer. I'm not going to, because if I have to go through watching this movie again, as pissed off as I was the first time, I'm not doing it. So it's going to be a little bit more lighthearted. It's going to be a little bit more poking fun of as opposed to piss and vinegar, I guess, is the expression. Anyway, I, I stopped writing notes because I stopped watching the movie. Uh, maybe I'll do more if anybody's watching. I'll probably be back. I don't know. Anyway, I'm out of here. Hey, all I know is I did what I did. I saw the movie. I'm now ready to take on episode, what, nine? Yeah, I'm, not, I'm ready to take on episode nine. I, I, I don't even have to make any more videos unless, you know, I want to make more fun of it. But anyway, I'm out of here. See ya.